And now it's time for Corner Table. It's our exclusive theater review segment, and it features legendary critic John Simon and relative newcomer Justin Brown. Simon, he's written on theater, film, and the fine arts for more than 50 years, including 35 years at New York Magazine. He's also been published in The Times, Washington Post, and much more. Brown, he is an actor and a director who also reviews shows. Well, tonight, they're taking a look at Escape to Margaritaville. It is a musical featuring original songs and some Jimmy Buffett classics. Hello, hello, Corner Table friends near and far. I'm Justin Brown, and I'm with my friend John. Hi. Hey, John. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Fabulous. Yeah. I want to let everybody know, today we're talking about Escape to Margaritaville. It's... I mean, I could describe it by saying everyone else involved, but it's really the Jimmy Buffett musical. Um, it's Greg Garcia and Michael Malley have written the book to it. It's got a lot of names in this header. We've got Alison Luff playing the lead. We have Lisa Howard, Eric Peterson, Paul Alexander Nolan as the lead man. The fabulous Rima Webb and Don Sparks are our leads in the show. Uh, John, initial thoughts, what are you thinking? I think that this is a contraption made to more or less suit those Buffett songs, uh, which already is a handicap. Uh, and then on top of that, the two writers, obviously, to my mind, are quite undistinguished. And every cliché, every musical comedy cliché that's ever been in existence seems to have found its way into this show. Uh, there's not an original moment in it that I can spot, and it's all sort of taken from hither and yon and there and here, and there's no real imagination, original imagination involved, and it's all, all terribly conventional. There's the beautiful girl with her funny sidekick. There are two scenes in beds which are shown perpendicularly. That comes out of hairspray. Uh, everything comes out of somewhere else, and it was better somewhere else than it is here. In other words, this is a compilation of cliches, um, utterly, in my mind, stupefying. What baffles me, personally, is prior to this show taking up this space at the Marriott Marquis, which is a fabulous theater, um, we had On Your Feet. I wasn't a huge fan of On Your Feet. However, I would take that over this any day. Um, I find this show to be incredibly simplistic. I find it to be a great summer show. I imagine a lot of regional and community theaters will be doing this show, which is fine. But please leave it there. I don't really understand why anybody picked up this score and the book and said, oh yeah, let's invest $16 million into this show and put it at one of the most capable you know, theater venues on Broadway. I don't see why this needs to be here. Um, I also think that Allison Luff, Rima Webb, um, two really, really, really wonderful actresses are being provided a disservice with this work. They're really, really wonderful, especially Rima, who is an incredible singer, is barely singing anything in this show. The dialect work was subpar. The storyline, I mean, and you'll agree with me, towards the end of the second act, we continue to sit there wondering, OK, is it over now, and is it over now, and is it over now, and is it over now? They, they just drag on this story that just, I didn't care about anything, any of it, any person in it. And it kind of breaks my heart, because I can see the potential of these actors working on that stage, trying so hard to kind of find gold through all of the garbage that they've been handed in the show. And it's a fun show. I'm not going to take that away. It's a fun show, but so much of it doesn't make sense. Who wears heels to the beach? I did once, and it was an awful idea. <laughs> you know, so there's way too many inconsistencies in this piece for me to be able to back it and say that, it's, that there's really anything good about it. Yeah, but there it is, the, the conventional girl meets boy or boy meets girl, and they have a weekend of great sex together. Then the boy, then the girl and her side, her comic sidekick, because they're always a beautiful leading lady and her comic sidekick. Then they go all back to where they came from. Then the boy follows them and mm -hmm. tries to uh, ingratiate himself to the girl. She won't have him. Then he goes back to his island 
and lo and behold, she shows up there too, and now everything is hunky dory. Mm -hmm. There's no psychology behind it. Right. There's no development. There's behind. no nuance. What? There's no nuance. No, there isn't. Nothing. And it's too bad because, as you say, one or two performers are quite good, and Alison Luff is attractive. Uh, but it doesn't help. It doesn't. And I mean, what I'm also baffled by is it's directed by Christopher Ashley, who is the artistic director of La Jolla Playhouse. I just, I expect better. I expect more. He also, I mean, this is also we're talking about some of the same creative people behind Come From Away. And we get it. A lot of people like Come From Away. However, we sitting at this table found it very pedestrian. And yet again, here we are with Escape to Margaritaville, feeling very pedestrian. So to wrap it up, John, I think we both agree, it's gonna be a thumbs down for us. If you need a little escapism, go see something else on Broadway because I don't think this has it. Thank you guys. Well, that's gonna do it for us tonight and for this week. Thank you as always for joining us. We're gonna see you back here Monday at 6 p.m. Till then, have a terrific weekend.